my pleasure to introduce Maria Herpe, who Maria Herpe obtained her PhD in pathobiology at the University of Guelph, Canada, where she pursued oncology, vectored immunoprophylaxis, and gene therapy research. Maria also has obtained a master's in microbiology and immunology at the University of Ottawa in Canada, where she performed HIV and intrinsic immuno immunology basic research. As a scientific writer for Rapid Novar, the world leading antibody protein sequencing company, she manages grant projects and performs knowledge translation. And with that, we'll be hearing a presentation entitled Tag Team Presentation, Antibody Protein Sequencing, Advancing and Safeguarding Discovery. Hi everyone, thanks for popping over to our presentation today. My name is Jen and I have my colleague Maria here with me as well. My background is chemistry based, focusing on mass spec and NMR. And my job is to find the right solution for scientists hurdles in the discovery process and see where proteomics may help. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, like Jen said, I'm Maria. My background is in molecular virology and vector development for infectious diseases and cancer. And my role at Rapid Nowhere is to disseminate findings on established collaborations. Today, Jen and I will discuss how our antibody protein sequencing technology can be integrated into your pipeline to advance your discovery and development while ensuring reproducibility. Rapid Novor is a Canadian biotech company, and we specialize in mass spec based antibody protein sequencing. We have over 20 years of experience in the proteomics field, integrating mass spec and big data based machine learning. We are very proud to be Canada's privately, largest privately funded proteomics facility, and we have over 400 clients worldwide, which includes 18 of the top 20 major pharmas, as well as many major academic institutions. To date, we've sequenced over 3,000 antibodies with our protein sequencing technology, and that number always continues to grow. So today we're going to start the talk with Maria's own experience, what she encountered during research, and why obtaining the protein sequence at the time could have helped her greatly. We are then going to get into the antibody discovery space and showcase our newest technology, polyclonal sequencing through Repab, and then chat about how we've seen our Remab monoclonal sequencing service implemented throughout a standard pipeline. And from there, we have several interesting uses to view and chat about more. And now I'll pass it over to Maria to set the stage with her story. Thanks, Jen. During my PhD, I focused on vector development and had a general understanding of how important the amino acid sequence was for my research. But nothing highlighted its importance more than the last experiments I needed to do before finishing my PhD. To wrap up one of my papers, I needed to detect the protein I was studying. There's no commercial antibody available in the market to target my protein of interest. My PhD supervisor, Spencer, had given her a big supply of hybridoma supernatant that dwindled through the years. So naturally, at the end of my PhD, I had very little soup left to finish my uh, experiments. And this is exactly when one begins to think about problems. Um, when we reached out to my supervisor's mentor, we found out that he had thrown out the hybridoma cell line. To finish my studies, we then decided to make an antibody in-house. And we did this by inoculating mice with my protein of interest and some adjuvant, collecting the bleeds, purifying them with protein G, and this protein G purified soup is what I use for Western blot, ELISA, and immunohistochemistry studies. But we had very little of this and would have, would have, we would have likely had to repeat the experiment again, the process again. And repeating this process would have meant that we would have had to validate each time because as naturally with each immunization protocol, the polyclonal mixture might be slightly different each time. So... It, this meant that batching consistency coupled together with having to repeat the process meant that this was that it was unlikely that this project would be continued. 
When I joined Rapid Nova, I learned about protein sequencing and what can I say? Hindsight is always 2020. We could have used protein sequencing to ensure reproducible results and a longer supply for future experiments um, on that little hybrid homosperinate that I had left. I found that my experience is actually very common in both academia and industry because it is something that we at Rapid Nova see quite frequently. Um, and this is unfortunately because in the case of reagent antibodies, they are often discontinued or there is batch variability. But um, at Rapid Nova, that is not the only thing that we typically help our uh, researchers with. We have been able to assist researchers in a wide spectrum of ways from discovery and development in the case of therapeutic antibodies and biomarkers for in vitro diagnostics to immune characterization that, uh, and this all require a unifying premise, which is the primary amino acid sequence. Many of our clients have their own mass spec facilities, but they choose to outsource this specific need to us because we have developed the best methods and software to meet this need. Our large software team is constantly working on new developments as we advance towards deeper and more difficult characterization of immune responses. As part of our roles, we take the time to sit down and talk to our clients because they're experts in their field. And so they would know how to best nail down the exact uses and pipeline areas where our technology can best help them. Researchers working on antibody discovery and development that have benefited from our technology typically utilize three main platforms, hybridomas, display, and B-cell sequencing. However, typically all of these platforms have in common an, um, an immunization start point or an antigen target that is used to generate an immune response, like I did to generate my own antibody in us. But from this point on, the platforms do vary. Briefly, the splenocytes or PBMCs might be harvested for hybridoma generation or display or B-cell sequencing efforts respectively. And in the case of display, the immunization step is exploited to generate a phage or yeast library. In other words, the synthetic repertoire to foster affinity maturation in vitro. The downstream process for screening and engineering of antibody leads remains similar. So we help clients across all of these platforms at different areas upstream and downstream of their processes. For instance, post immunization, we have a proto-genomics approach that combines affinity purification of collected sera post immunization with your transcriptomics data or an only proteomics based protein sequencing approach to help you analyze your polyclones. When we um, approach antibody discovery with our clients, it's important for us to, to work with them so that we can integrate seamlessly with their pipeline in a complementary way. Uh, so in cases when they do not have access to nucleic material, we can work with them too. So by using us, you really have a lot more confidence when using that antibody because you'll have more structural insight that can guide your engineering and characterization efforts during your screening through your, throughout your pipeline. And this is because a complete picture of the protein can ensure your likelihood of success faster. The problem with the current landscape is that there is much spending of time and resources on troubleshooting things like reproducibility issues, unexplained binding problems, or lost means of antibody production, which can lead to risk, additional cost and time, and therefore fewer candidates making it to the later stages. But with a more comprehensive approach, one that includes structural insight and the primary amino acid sequence, you can ensure a more complete understanding of antibody leads. And the more you know about those antibodies early on, the less risk you will experience in later stages of your pipeline. With antibody protein sequencing, with antibody protein sequencing implemented in the discovery stages mentioned on the previous slide, you can increase your chances of success. Our clients value knowing more about antibodies early on so they can experience less risk in later stages of their pipeline. So our clients use our solutions to target different areas of basic and clinical research in industry and academia. Our widely used remap technology is often utilized for antibody confirmation, but it is also commonly used in the antibody discovery pipeline. We have recently introduced MatchMap as a service to enable, enable you to do a quick a quick confirmation check, sorry. Repab, which we briefly mentioned before, is applied in the early stages of antibody discovery um, or for therapeutic antibody development or biomarker discovery for in vitro diagnostics. And we also have an immune response finding platform called NovaRig, which allows our clients to characterize vaccinology studies and track immune responses in diverse cases like autoimmunity and cancer. 
So we'll begin looking at an example at how Repab, our polyclonal sequencing platform, can help you reach goals faster by accessing the bleeds and B cells from your animals right after immunization. So Repab is our polyclonal polyclonal sequencing technology that we've created to aid in drug discovery by looking directly at the immune response to an antigen of interest. Repab's workflow starts first with an antigen inoculation, and like most immunizations, there are multiple bleeds performed from naive to test the mid-schedule and final. Routine protein antigen, um, sorry, routine protein A and G purification are used to extract the IgGs. Um, and then from this, from here on, we also uh, perform antigen specific affinity purification to your reach for target antibodies. There is also an additional screening step that we use to assess five different samples of interest. So this could be five different subjects in a cohort or five different rabbits with few different purification strategies uh, using rabbit as a, a sample, as an example. At this point, we exploit our de novo protein sequencing technology to assess in combination with deep sequencing, including RNA-seq and NGS data analysis. And at the end, we're able to deliver full-length antigen-specific uh, IgG sequences, of which the heavy and light chains have been paired using our proprietary workflow. After that, we perform a comparative ELISA in-house and deliver recombinant target antibodies to the end user for, for, to further their internal screening and validation. So Repub has two options, as I mentioned before. In version one, we can use um, take advantage of using transcriptomics, uh, and on chapter two, relies only on proteomics. We'd like to assure you that we work with clients at different stages of the, their platform. So that means if you have the capabilities to do the immunization or synthesis yourself, we're of course happy to work with you with you just on the sequencing side. Uh, we have been successful in both proteogenomics and proteomics approaches by generating high affinity binders for our clients, and we welcome you to inquire further. So what happens when you're at the end of your pipeline and you want to um, uh, check or sequence an antibody? That's why our clients request remap sequencing. This is a step that is, um, so for example, a step that is often taken after target immunization is the collection of serum or plasma. And sometimes this is to either isolate PBMCs uh, for downstream library development, like we talked about previously, but sometimes it's also often done as a positive control to test binding affinity in ELISAs later on during screening. So our clients in the past have sent us a highly affinity purified sample that contains very few antibodies, one to five in an oligoclonal mixture or just one. And um, this was the case for um, these clients. They were studying LAG3, which is um, the lymphocyte activation gene 3 located on the surface of T cells and is an immune checkpoint uh, receptor important to cancer and autoimmune diseases. And their challenge is that the on they only had plasma, they did not have a sufficient amount to conduct NGS, but had a protein rich sample that they then affinity purified. So the structural characterization and confirmation of the novel LAG3 checkpoint inhibitor was performed with rapid novus remap protein sequencing with wild analysis, and our protein sequencing allowed them to recombinantly express and further evaluate the therapeutic properties of this novel anti-LAG3 antibody in xenograft models. Now focusing on the hybridoma technology, let's look at other time points that we can help you. At the hybridoma stage and downstream of it, our monoclonal sequencing technology really becomes beneficial. One could view the protein sequence as not only a form of accident insurance, but also as a method of knowing that your antibody is always going to behave the same. This is because as many scientists have experienced, hybridomas can die or get contaminated, and they often fall to have batch-to-batch -batch variability. And downstream at the antibody level, if you're using a supplier, there's always a chance the anti antibody could be discontinued. And Marie's experience is very common in both academia and industry, and something that we at Rapinovor see very frequently. 
Unfortunately, in the case of reagent antibodies, they're often discontinued or there's batch variability. Another academia case we had is with a PhD student who needed a supply of an antibody to finish her thesis work. When she went to order more of that reagent, uh, she was surprised to find that it was discontinued. Luckily, she still had some of her original antibody in her tube that she was able to send it to us. We got the protein sequence for her and she was able to produce that antibody in-house and finish her studies. And batch-to-batch -batch variability in hybridomas becomes a big problem because the antibodies generated are not always pure monoclonals. This paper from Bradbury in 2018 is quite interesting. It's, they analyzed 185 random hybridomas and found that 32% produced at least one additional light or heavy chain. In addition to having unwanted antibody chains uh, or combinations of that in your sample, they also found that these samples with additional chains uh, had degraded antibody properties, including specificity, binding signal, and signal-to-noise ratio. Furthermore, in-house samples we have sequenced, labeled as pure MABs, often contain another antibody in the mixture and not just other chains. So it is some, something that is common. And with that story concludes our third point. And in this stage in your, of your research, it's apparent that having control of the supply and reproducibility of your antibodies is critical for both project success and just maintaining a decent timeline. Remab is of course also used very frequently in the antibody engineering side of things, maybe to create a proof of concept, uh, which then would then lay a foundation for a therapeutic campaign or to validate a novel multi-specific antibody, or for the construction of fragment antibody molecules. At the screening portion of your pipeline, you might seek to perform further design. And this is exactly what the researchers at Janssen have used our technology for, which I'll describe in the following slides. So in this case study, we'll be looking at a recent patent published by Janssen. This patent is based off the premise that gamma delta T cells, which mainly express heterodimers of TRGV9 and V delta 2 chains, demonstrate potent anti-tumor functions. These cells express TCR, TRGV9, and the majority, if not all of these cells, exhibit efficient cytotoxicity of tumor target cells. The ability is then harvested using a bispecific antibody constructed such that one arm binds to the TRGV9 structure and the other bar arm binds to a second tumor-associated antigen expressed in the tumor cells. Thus, bispecific antibody bridges the effector and target cells resulting in tumor killing. Now, Janssen needed to modify a sequence of these antibodies into a bispecific which was of course difficult to do without the protein sequence since they only had access to a protein sample. And with that, they took advantage of our Remab platform here. So Janssen sequenced two antibodies with us, which they used the sequences to engineer into a bispecific. We obtained excellent results on the antibody sequencing side, as you can see here with the immense level of coverage and peptide overlap. Now, Jason really trusts us to get the sequence of their antibodies correct the first time, and we are confident that we're sending them a 100% accurate sequence every time. We're looking for a minimum of 30 times coverage over every single amino acid, and in most cases, just like this one, we are seeing hundreds of overlaps, uh, which is why we are so sure of the sequences. Now, Janssen expressed and purified that anti-TCRV gamma-9 antibody, which demonstrated binding to human gamma-delta T cells, showing specificity towards TCRV gamma-9, which is awesome news for them. And from there, Janssen also sequenced an anti-TAA2 clone and constructed that anti-TRGV9, anti-TAA2 bispecific uh, human IgG1 antibody. And this was tested for T-cell redirected killing of H929 cells, which expressed that TAA2. 
This is just one of their figures from the patent that shows that this bispecific did bind gamma delta T cells and mediate gamma delta T cytotoxicity against TAA2 expressing H292 cells in vitro. We're really happy to see such great achievements coming from our sequencing, uh, which was critical to their success. So at the end of your pipeline for preclinical studies, you might also seek to perform further characterization of a structure and function of your candidates. One of our clients utilized Remap to do just that. They needed to confirm the primary amino acid sequence of two broadly neutralizing antibodies they generated against emerging Hendra and Nipah virus. They sent us their neutralizing antibodies, which you can see uh, uh, after we ran uh, our gel, uh, how they look in the gel. And we were able to fully sequence them, as you can see on the right, um, with uh, the full co coverage from our sequencing algorithms. We were able to confirm all isoleucine and leucines in their CDRs. And knowledge of these hydrophobic residues is important because they're considerably present in the CDRs and can alter epitope binding. Having the primary sequence allowed them to recombinantly produce uh, these antibodies in sufficient amounts to do a multitude of experiments like neutralization assays, which was critical to validating the function of these antibodies individually and as a cocktail, and also cryo-EM studies to characterize how the antibodies structurally fit with the fusion glycoproteins and understand the mode of action of these potential therapeutics. Cryo-EM requires copious amounts of protein in the milligram scale, so it's very important to have the primary sequence for recombinant production. Having all this facilitated by Remap, they were able to show that the antibodies bound to the glycoproteins pre-fusion before preventing infection. So, how does it work? To describe Remap, I like to break it down into just four steps. Enzymatic digestions, mass spec acquisitions, Remab, assembly, uh, and then final review by our bioinformatics experts. And with this process, we're able to get uh, researchers a 100% accurate protein sequence in just two weeks. The accuracy is really owed to our requirements for the amount of evidence needed to make a call on the sequence, including that minimum of 30 times coverage over each individual amino acid. And of course, this is science, and there's always a curveball that science throws at us in anything we do. And in the mass spec world, that hurdle is isobaric residues or combinations of isobaric residues. Uh, and the most common challenge here is isoleucine and leucine. This is actually one reason I've heard people say why they shouldn't do de novo sequencing, and it's due to that ambiguity of these uh, isobaric residues. For us, this is simply untrue because we do have a way to distinguish between them with 100% confidence. And we're using the W-ion method, which has, was actually first described around 30 years ago, but Rapinova was the first to commercialize such a method. And at a first glance, isoleucine and leucine have an identical molecular mass, 113 Daltons. Uh, you'd think that they're indistinguishable on mass spec. But despite this, they do have unique R groups. And what we can do is fragment these individual amino acids further to obtain W ions. We measure this loss in mass and from this data determine whether the residue is an isoleucine or leucine with unmatched accuracy. Traditional approaches will look for germline sequences or rely on the enzyme digestion rules, but neither are really reliable or truly de novo. And when we regularly see five or more isoleucines or leucines in the CDRs, accuracy really becomes key. And our goal at Rapinovor is to deliver you a single sequence that just works every time. So today we covered Remab, our monoclonal sequencing platform, and Repab, our polyclonal sequencing technology. In the future, we also hope to talk more about our other services, including Novarig, which is for providing a relative quantification of proteotypic peptides of interest, which may be useful for biomarker work or vaccine studies. Additionally, MatchMab, a useful tool for confirming sequences of antibodies. And the best thing about our technology is that it's truly de novo. All of our findings are completely based off of the mass spec data we observe. This means that we can sequence any species, any isotype, 
as well as non-standard antibodies such as nanobodies or conjugated antibodies. In terms of sample requirements, all we ask is for 100 micrograms of a reasonably pure protein sample. In return, you'd receive a 100% accurate sequence with full coverage that includes the variable and constant regions, isoleucine and leucine determination breakdown, as well as PTM insights. One question you might be asking yourself is, how can you claim 100% accuracy? Well, it really comes down to that depth of coverage I was talking about that we're able to achieve with that multi-enzyme digest and simply having the most, ma most sensitive mass specs out there. We look for that minimum of 30 times overlap over each individual amino acid, but we typically are achieving much greater coverage than just that. In addition to the proprietary software that allows us for real-time sequencing so that we can make mass spec adjustments as needed. And we also have our brilliant team of uh, in-house bioinformaticians that look at every single amino acid to make sure it's correct before we send it to a client. And with that, it concludes our presentation today. Thank you all so much for your attention. I hope we were able to give you some ideas about the application of our technology and how implementing it into a discovery pipeline. Before we head to our virtual coffee break, I did want to give the biographical information for the other half of the, dynam of the dynamic duo at um, Rapid Novar. So Jennifer Serha, obtained her master's in chemistry from the University of Guelph, Canada. Jennifer has experience working in several industries, including food, agriculture, and pharma. Her graduate studies focused on constructing conjugate vaccines through characterizing bacterial polysaccharides using NMR and mass spec. As a scientific sales executive with Rapid Novar, her goal is to identify opportunities to help researchers based on what hurdles they may be experiencing, including applications of the company's mass spectrometry-based protein sequencing technology. Great presentation. Thank you again, uh, Jennifer and Maria, for your presentation. And if you have any questions for them, you guys can always connect with them with our one-to-one -one meeting scheduler. Uh, you can book a quick 10, 15-minute chat with Jennifer, and she would love to uh, give you a more deeper overview of their platform. Yeah, with that said, uh, we will be heading to our final break before our next few presentations in our panel. So we'll regroup again, guys, at 2.35 uh, p.m. Uh, feel free to network amongst yourselves, visit the booths, and um, yeah, we'll regroup.